No one making movies today makes them quite like Wes Anderson. In a series of blissfully engaging, quirkily comic escapades, Anderson has taken us to highly stylized versions of America, both urban, the Royal Tenenbaums, and rural, Moonrise Kingdom, India, the Darjeeling Limited, and Central Europe, the Grand Budapest Hotel. He's also explored the world of Roald Dahl in Fantastic Mr. Fox, an exquisitely conceived animated film that suggested that the unique visions and methods of storytelling employed by Dahl and Anderson are not dissimilar. And now comes Isle of Dogs, Anderson's second foray into animation. Written in collaboration with his regular team, Roman Coppola, the son of Francis Ford, and Jason Schwartzman, Isle of Dogs unfolds in a mythical Japan a few years into the future. This is no sci-fi movie, however, but a deeply affectionate and lovingly created tribute to Japanese culture, Japanese design, and perhaps above all, Japanese cinema. References to the great Japanese filmmakers, including Kurosawa and Ozu, abound and will be embraced by film buffs. But these references will in no way inhibit the enjoyment of this cheerfully eccentric film for a wider audience. A prologue titled Boy, Samurai and Headless Ancestor is set in the mythical city of Megasaki, where the dictatorial mayor named Kobayashi, after another great Japanese film director, has decided to outlaw all dogs from the prefecture because he personally favours cats. An epidemic of snout fever, real or imagined, among the canines is the excuse for banishing all dogs to Trash Island, so-called because it's mainly used as a site for waste disposal. The first exile is Spots, Kobayashi's own guard dog and beloved pet of the despotic ruler's 12-year-old ward, Atari. Anderson has the Japanese human characters speak in their own language with the occasional English translation. For example, the mayor, who looks not unlike Toshiro Mifune in the Kurosawa films, is voiced by Kunichi Nomura, who also collaborated on the story, and Atari by Koyu Rankin. The dogs are voiced by a stellar gallery of fine actors. Spots has the voice of Liev Schreiber, then there's Chief Brian Cranston, a scruffy stray, Rex Edward Norton, Boss Bill Murray, King Bob Balaban, and Duke Jeff Goldblum. Wait a second. Before we attack each other and tear ourselves to shreds like a pack of maniacs, let's just open the sack first and see what's actually in it. It might not even be worth the trouble. I don't know. What do you think? I'm not sure. Maybe. Each one is given a distinctive character, and there's even a romance between Chief and the elegant poodle nutmeg, Scarlett Johansson, a relationship that inevitably evokes the Disney classic Lady and the Tramp. One of my favourite hounds was Oracle, Tilda Swinton, a pug renowned for predicting the future. Thrown into the mix is a sort of detective story involving American exchange student Tracy, Greta Gerwig, and the fate of opposition candidate Watanabe, Akira Ito, whose science party is sceptical as to the source of snout fever. Yoko Ono, no less, provides the voice of Watanabe's research assistant, while Kobayashi's official interpreter is voiced by Francis McDormand. With its beautiful formal imagery, its gallery of hugely likeable canines, and its cheerfully crazy plotting, Isle of Dogs really is a unique experience and a thoroughly enchanting one. Not only is it a visual treat, but there's also a great soundtrack, including a magnificent music score from Alexandre Desplat that ranks with his best work. It's worth sitting right through the end credits to experience the music. All this and a political subtext for those who care to seek it out. Don't miss it four and a half stars. Mm-hmm.